Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94 here. Back with another reaction video. <laughs> and today, we're going to react to Is This Even Fair? Bro, what's going on with my shit, bro? What's my shit? Oh my god, my shit was uneven. I just looked at it and it was uneven. <laughs> but, anyways, though. <laughs> Is this even fair? Hmm, what could he be talking about? Hmm, what, what what could he be talking about? Huh? What could he be talking about? <laughs> Without further ado, let's get right into it. So first off, understand, you're seeing this video well after the trade went down, but at the time I'm writing this script, I'm just freshly reacting to what just happened. And my simple reaction is, wow. Damian Lillard has officially been traded from the Portland Trailblazers to the Milwaukee Bucks, joining Giannis and Chris Middleton, forming one of the strongest big threes on paper in the entire league. I have so many thoughts on this, so I'm wrestling with where to even start. First off, I'm not totally surprised to see the Blazers management send Lillard to a location of the what he requested. To a certain extent, that was the last bit of control that they had over the situation at all. And a recent But I don't really trust niggas. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. We at the top. This is us. Nigga. Video, I talked about how unprecedented it is for a player to force his way to one specific team after he just signed a Supermax extension Fact. with at least three years left on his contract. If the Blazers had sent Lillard to Miami, then it basically would have made them look like a complete doormat and would have sent a concerning statement to the NBA general managers. So at least with them sending Lillard to Milwaukee instead, a bit of their own sense of dignity remains intact. Now according yep. to reports, Lillard did state that if he was traded to any organization other than Miami, then he would immediately request a trade from there. But I gotta imagine that Dame is gonna be content with this result. Based on his recent post on social media, he seems to already be embracing the change. Many people, including yours truly, now see the Bucks as the championship favorites heading into next season. As Giannis and Lillard seem like a match made in heaven with their inside and outside dynamic. Then throw in the fact that Middleton seems like the ideal third option, and I'm absolutely terrified to see what this trio can accomplish. I mean, y'all overhyping it a little bit, but I still feel like we should still make a move for Chris Middleton. We should just get rid of that contract, get us a bench, and build around Dame and Giannis. I just, me personally, I feel like we, I feel like getting rid of Chris and getting a bench around this team. I feel like it's just more important than what we're getting right now. Now, Drew Holiday is nothing to scoff at, and I'm sure, in some aspects, his presence will be somewhat missed in Milwaukee. Oh, most definitely. Defensively, most definitely defensively. Defensively, we are going to miss Drew Holiday, because Damian Lillard ain't finna do shit defensively, and Chris Middleton is a shell of himself right now. We don't even know what Chris Middleton finna do, but if Chris Middleton can at least get back to 2020 form, at least, we'll be all right, but... Defensively, bro, <sighs> niggas like Luca, Kyrie, they gonna give us, they gonna give us forty a night, bro. Niggas like uh, Jamal Murray, they'll give us forty. Steph will go off for fifty. Um, Donovan Mitchell will definitely start going off. Yeah, we, we got to get our bench right, bro. Because once we get our bench right, bro, we'll be straight. I feel like if we can pull off a trade with the Bulls for Alex Caruso 
and a couple of other pieces, we'll be all right. We really need like an Alex Caruso on this team. Alex Caruso, Patrick Beverly, we need them too. I feel like if we could get a Patrick Beverly and an Alex Caruso, I feel like we'll be all right for the most part. I'm very curious to see where Drew ultimately lands. And if it is in Miami, that's not a bad consolation prize. I mean, it's all right, but I mean, for Drew's sake, it's like, you going to, I mean, I get it. We traded you. You just said you wanted to be a buck for life. I get it, bro. But don't go to Miami out of, out of spite, bro. Don't go to Miami out of spite, bro. Nah, nah. Go to Chicago. Yeah, go to Chicago. <laughs> Especially when you consider how the rest of their finals roster is still intact. And then what is Miami going to trade for Drew Holiday? What? Kyle Lowry? You think you think the Portland Trailblazers is going to take a Kyle Lowry? Kyle Lowry will get waived. And then he come to the Bucks. And then we'll have we'll have somewhat of a decent balanced team, I would say. If we get if we get Kyle Lowry, but still I want Patrick Beverly and Alex Caruso, because we still need a bench, bro. We got rid of Grayson Allen, bro. That's 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 not good. But back to Giannis and Dame on the Bucks. I'm not gonna lie, as a Lakers fan who watched every game of the Lakers' dominant 2001 season, this is probably the pairing that gives me the most Shaq and Kobe vibes since then. With Giannis, you're talking about a powerful athletic big who fairly recently dropped 50 points in a championship clinching game. And with Dame, you're talking about a perimeter assassin who dropped 71 points in a game just a few months ago. Both of these stars are coming off of seasons where they averaged well over 30 points per game. And again, I don't see them eating into each other's opportunities so much. Given their incredibly different styles offensively that are actually complementary to one another. Giannis oh no, the pick and roll game gonna be crazy between these two because what do you do against that pick and roll? That's that's that pick and roll gonna be a motherfucker because what do you do? Do you give up the three to Dame or do you let Giannis roll to the basket and get the dunk? What do you do in that situation? That's a tough-ass pick-and-roll you got to defend, bro. I feel sorry for any team that got to defend that pick-and-roll, bro. It's going to be sad, bro. It's going to be sad, bro. You're you going to be sitting there confusing the motherfucker. You're just going to be sitting there like... That's why you take a few steps back to go... You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, what what do you do against that? What do you what do you do against a Dame Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo pick and roll? I I you don't want to give up the three, but at the same time, you don't want to let Giannis get rolling because when Giannis get fucking rolling, you're done. <laughs> is very accustomed to setting tough screens for his shooters, but now we're talking about one of the most lethal shooters in NBA history who's basically in range the instant he crosses half court. I'm really interested to see what Lillard's efficiency splits will look like this upcoming season. Right. There are a lot of examples of players joining more talented teams and suddenly their efficiency spikes to levels that they never experienced before. For example, when Allen Iverson joined Carmelo Anthony on the Denver Nuggets in 2006, his field goal percentage immediately increased dramatically. When Kevin Durant joined Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, That's and the Golden State Warriors, he That's immediately had his three best the field goal goal. percentage seasons of his career up to that point. This is often what happens when an elite player joins a very talented roster and suddenly doesn't draw all of the defensive attention. With teammates like Giannis and even Brooke Lopez drawing attention with his stellar shooting, yeah. Lillard will likely find himself with more single man coverage than he's ever experienced in his NBA career so far. And I expect that to translate to his closest to 50-40-90 splits that he's ever had. Last year, Lillard was second in the entire league in three-pointers attempted per game, with a whopping career high of 11.3. Many of those attempts were highly contested, but now, as a buck, I expect Dame to be salivating by how wide open some of those looks will be. For basically his entire career, Giannis has been one of the hardest players to predict when the postseason rolls around. 
At times, he comes up small when the games mattered the most. And then in other instances, he comes up with some of the most mesmerizing clutch performances, like in the 2021 NBA Finals. Now with arguably the most clutch player in the entire league by his side, less pressure will be on Giannis to perform at his best when the games matter the most, as there is a... But that does mean that Chris Middleton does have to step up as well, especially when the double teams start happening. Like I said, if Chris Middleton can get back to 2020 form, not 2021, not 2022 form, but just 2020 form, if he can get back to that, oh, this team is championship gold right here because Chris Middleton is really the X factor right now. I, I still don't have any faith in him, especially after last season. This nigga was playing like butt juice all last season. But in the playoffs, he did start to come alive a little bit. You know, the points were there, but it was like, the fuck was y'all doing against Jimmy the whole time? Like y'all was y'all was not guarding Jimmy. Fuck out of here. But if Middleton could get back to form, be a productive 20, 22, 23, 25 point scorer, bro, this bro, we are championship gold. Because you got Lillard in the clutch. And if it ain't Lillard, you can go to uh Chris. And if the if it go if it gets a little too left, you got Brooke and you got Brooke Lopez and you got Giannis. This is this is dangerous right here. This is a dangerous deadly duo right now. This is a dangerous deadly team right now. Like y'all just don't we just gotta get a bitch. That's it. We got Thanis Ante the Kumpo and Alex Ante the Kumpo. On our bench right now. <laughs> we gotta get a bench, bro. I'm sorry, bro. The bench is ass, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Hear me, hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. The fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. Like, really, we gotta really get a, a better bench, bro. That's about it. A strong likelihood that we'll be seeing Dame Time performances all the way into the month of June. Some will try to belittle the Bucks' chances, because by giving up Holiday, Milwaukee departed with one of the best offensive point guards in the league, for one of the least impressive. Although that is true, you have to consider that Steph has been winning championships as a point guard for a while, as he was considered a subpar defensive player. Seeing how three out of the five players in the Bucks' projected starting lineups are considered as solid defensive players, I'm pretty sure this team will be just fine in that department. The thing about Damian Lillard is that it's now officially put up or shut up time. For the longest time, I've been one of his biggest advocates, saying that I believe he's a championship caliber player, but he just hasn't had the right superstar support to give him those championship opportunities. Well, now he clearly does. Only time Dame Lillard had that shit was when Lamarcus Aldridge and uh, Nicholas Batum was there. After them two left, that team went to shit. Cause CJ McCollum, yeah, he good, but no. does. And as a result, these next couple of years will be a defining period of his legacy. At the age of 33, he probably just has a few prime level years left within his basketball career. Yeah. But these will easily be his greatest opportunities at an NBA championship, assuming the core of this roster does in fact remain healthy. There's another side to this story though, and it's the Miami Heat. I'm sure many people will be acting like the Miami franchise is on life support after this failed attempt at Lillard. Oh no, they and did. From an emotional standpoint, the boys ain't on life support. True, the boys but did. This team is still the defending Eastern Conference champions. That don't mean shit. Basically, that don't mean shit. Did they win the finals? No, that don't mean shit. That that Eastern Conference Finals thing don't mean shit. Did you win the the main championship, which is the main goal? Did you win the NBA Finals? Did he? No. Then fuck it. Then fuck out of here with that bullshit, man. Why are you trying to hear that, man? Hear me, hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. 
The fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. Nobody talks about the conference champion. Everybody talks about the NBA champion. Fuck, what you read, bro? The entire roster returning for another shot. They'll hope that a player like Tyler Hero won't take all the trade rumors personally. Because I remember the Lamar Odom for Chris Paul trade. That was ah, that's a little different. Him. Unless unless Tyler Hero got a drug addiction, we don't know nothing about. I'm think I think it's safe to say Tyler Hero be all right. He 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 understands part of the business. Stern, which then sent Odom into an emotional spiral where he demanded a trade simply for feeling unwanted. Hero could just take it on the chin and report for training camp with no issues. Hell no, nah. this is the team that he can get an extension from. I'm finna drop the bag because of my emotions? Fuck out of here. But the repercussions of this summer are still yet to be seen. Drew Holiday is apparently still on the market, and with Miami looking for ways to improve, that could end up being a solid acquisition. Regardless of where Drew ends up being, that will be a team worth paying attention to. I mean, I'm not going to be mad if Drew go to Miami. I'm just saying, bro. You said you want to be a buck for life, man. At least, have, at least go out with some dignity, bro. At least go out with some dignity, bro. Come on, man. You don't want to you don't want to wear that jersey. That jersey don't even look right on you, bro. Look at that jersey. That jersey don't even look right on him, bro. Drew, go out with some dignity, bro. We still love you out there in Milwaukee, man. You 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 came up clutch for us, bro. We we ain't forget when you stripped Devin Booker and threw that lob to Giannis. We ain't forget that, baby. That's still I matter of fact, hold on real quick. You know what I'm saying? Cause y'all don't understand, man. <sighs> what what is it? <sighs> what is it called? Uh... Uh, well, shall I... we, we ain't forget. We, we ain't forget. <laughs> we we ain't forget. We ain't forget, man. We ain't forget, Drew. Drew, we ain't never forget. We ain't gonna never forget this. This is iconic. In Milwaukee Buck history, this is iconic. We we forget that. We forget. The only bad thing. Uh, I just, hey, hey, true. Just go out with some dignity, man. Don't, don't. You don't even look right in this. You don't even look right in this year jersey, bro. Get, get. Nah, man. You wanna, you wanna go somewhere where you gonna shine, bro. You know what I'm saying Chicago is a good bet for you, bro. Considering the fact that Lonzo Ball is not gonna play, so you would be a great pickup for Chicago, if anything. I do believe that within a matter of moments, the Milwaukee Bucks went from title contenders to clear title favorites. But with that being said, it would be foolish to consider their title as a foregone conclusion. The Lakers have retooled and appear to have a firm man, sense of- Man, fuck the Lakers, man. Fuck them bitch ass niggas, man. Fuck the Lakers, man. Fuck the Lakers, man. Fuck them. Fuck them. Y'all really hyping it up, man. Then y'all got this weak ass nigga right here. Like Austin Reeves is really that guy. Fuck out of here, bro. What has he done? What has Austin Reeves done? Y'all acting like this team is gonna be elite. This nigga old as shit. This nigga can barely even play a full season. He don't do nothing, bro. <laughs> he get a couple of points. That's it, bro. Like, like who else on this team is gonna really do something? D'Angelo Russell gonna do something? Fuck out of here, bro. 
team is garbage, bro. If this nigga get injured and this nigga get injured, then what? This nigga pushing 40. This nigga body is just made out of pure shit. Like, nah, bro. Like, this nigga body made out of paper mache, bro. Fuck out of here, bro. Fuck out of here, bro. I ain't trying to hear that shit. Fuck out of here. Their identity heading into this upcoming season. The Warriors appear to be a threatening wild card with the addition of Chris Paul. I doubt it. I doubt it. But I mean, Chris Paul presence will be felt, especially with guys like Kevon Looney. I, I say this, though. He going to make their big man shine. It sucks that they traded Kaminga, though. Because I felt like if they would have kept Kaminga and then you got Chris Paul, I, that would have been a deadly combination, bro. I think he could have made a star out of, uh, not Kaminga, but, um, damn, what's that, what's that kid name they traded to, uh, I said Kaminga, my bad, Kaminga, uh, Kaminga, the one kid that they drafted at the second overall, the guy they drafted before LaMelo, I forgot that kid name already, Wiseman, Wiseman. If they never would have traded Wiseman, that would have been a deadly combination with Chris Paul. I'm telling you. Chris Paul, he makes big men look good, bro. DeAndre, remember, DeAndre Jordan was an all-star one year. <laughs> Just remember that. DeAndre Jordan was an all-star one year. And Chris Paul and Blake Griffin wasn't. Just keep that in mind. That's how good he make your big man look. So guys like Kevon Looney, he going to get he going to get hella he going to get a hella boost this year. Kevon Looney might be most improved six man of the year candidate this year. Um, yeah, he gonna definitely make a lot of guys better. Him and uh Gary Payton Jr. in the backcourt, that's probably gonna be a really bad that's gonna be a problem. But I don't know, man. This nigga old as shit. And he is unreliable. He old as shit, and he's very unreliable in playoff situations. So, God forbid something happen to Steph or Clay, and this nigga got to step up. Because if you gotta, if you gotta, if you gotta put your team behind this guy, bum, 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 bum. You getting eliminated. Phoenix is bolstering an intimidating super team loaded with offense. Once again, they just like us. They got the same potential just like us. The only problem is they ain't got no fucking bench. What is we talking about here? No Phoenix boys ain't got no bench and then they just traded away DeAndre Ayton. So now they have no, no, no low presence now. So the paint is wide open for these guys to make their drives and shit like that, which is cool and all that. But what you going to do rebounding wise? What you going to do pick and roll wise? What you going to do when you need that easy bucket down low? Exactly. Man, it's Denver can take them out easily again. So I don't even see Phoenix as a threat right now. I, you can have Bradley Bill and all that. That don't mean shit. Offensive firepower. Teams like Boston and Philly will be... Fuck out of here. Boston, they traded away Marcus Smart. They got rid of a whole bunch. They got rid of a gang of people, bro. They, they banking on Kristaps Porzingis, bro. When has Kristaps Porzingis been relevant, bro? Kristaps Porzingis ain't been relevant since he was a Nick, bro. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here, nigga. Christos Porzingis ain't finna do shit. This nigga probably gonna get injured halfway through the season. Cause that nigga, that nigga fragile too. Then you got Philly. Philly just... Let's just move on from Philly. Cause at this point, Philly is a fucking joke, okay? You got rid of Ben Simmons. You bring in James Harden. You know what I'm saying? You bring in James Harden. Do you know what I'm saying? And you still ass. Make it make sense, bro. Hear me, hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. 
the fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. So I ain't even trying to hear about no fucking Philly. Especially not no Boston. They got rid of their core. They got rid of, uh... They got rid of Marcus Smart. So, shit. Marcus Smart and Memphis now. Ain't nobody talking about Memphis, though. But then again, John Morant is suspended for 25 games. So, there's that. So, they, so Memphis got to do what they got to do, bro. But as far as, like, Boston go, they, they, they lost... Key players. Miami lost key players. Philadelphia. Ass. Come on, man. Then who else? Who? Cleveland? Fuck out of here. Be in the picture like they always are. And of course, Denver will be poised for their title defense. That's our only competition. That's the only competition is the guys that, that got the champ. They got the gold right now. The defending champions are our only competition right now. I don't really see nobody in the East defeating us. I don't see nobody in the West defeating us outside of these guys. These are the only guys that can give us problems because they got a well-balanced team. They have a really good coach. Jokic can average triple doubles like crazy. Jamal Murray is a fucking problem. Uh, then you got Aaron Gordon. I don't. I don't know how that's gonna work. I don't know who you match up on Aaron Gordon because somebody got to guard Jokic. Then they got that solid ass bench too. Yeah, it's 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 looking pretty tough. It's looking pretty tough out here in these streets, my boy. Denver's looking like that team right now, bro. But like I said, if the Bucks can make a couple of moves, man, try to make a move to get Alex Caruso or something like that, we'll be straight, man. Cause right now we got Thonis and Alex onto the Cooper on our bench. And that's unless unless. Because they have been in the... When, how, how long has Thonis been on the team? The Nassis has been on the team since 2020. So, 2020 to... Yeah, so around this time, yeah, around year four, that's when Giannis, like, broke out. So, if the Nassis can have that year four breakout like Giannis did, then I'm all to the good. If, if Alex can have that as well, hey, we all to the good. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be hell, man. Because, like I said, the Bucks gave up so many assets for fucking Jay Crowder last year. I was like, why did we make this move? We don't need Jay Crowder. Got to the playoffs. Jay Crowder couldn't do shit. Put him on Jimmy Butler. Couldn't do nothing. But watch Jimmy Butler put buckets in his face, bro. Fuck out of here, bro. We gave up all that good young talent to Indiana. For fucking Jay Crowder, bro. Led by the best player in the NBA. It's going to be an exciting NBA season, and I can't wait to see it. So stay tuned to this channel for daily videos along the way. So now it's your turn. Which are your top three teams in the power rankings heading into this up? Bucks are number one. No, Denver's number one. Bucks are number two. I'm going to have to put the Warriors at number three. Yeah, that's it. I, I just see it like that. Uh, I can't count out the Warriors because they still got the same core. The Phoenix boys, they ain't got no bench, and they just lost their big man. So I see them as like a five seed. Luka and Kyrie, I don't know who's on that team, but if they got some good defense around Luka and Kyrie, I could see them being a top three Western Conference team. I could see Dallas being a problem in the West if if Dallas got defense and rim protection. Um, the Lakers, uh, they star players are old as shit. I'm not even giving the Lakers a chance. Y'all players are old as shit. Uh, Sacramento, that's a team to look out for. Everybody, everybody's sleeping on Sacramento, bro. Sacramento's still that team, bro. I feel like I feel like Sacramento might surprise y'all this year. You know what I'm saying? So keep an eye on Sacramento because ain't nobody talking about them. The teams that you ain't talking about is the ones making the sneaky moves. So keep that in mind. So yeah, that's just gonna about do it for this one. I'll see y'all in the next video. Till then, peace out.